Good morning, everybody. Thank you for joining us for our webinar, Real World is Nonlinear, Use Abacus to Simulate Reality. Our webinar will be one hour long. We will have a 15 minute Q&A session at the end. So if you come across any questions during our presentation, please ask us and we will be happy to answer those questions. I would like to get started with a brief introduction to our presenter. Today, uh, the presentation will be given by Raghavendra Bancor, FEA consultant at Vias. Raghavendra has a master's degree in technology and mechanical engineering from the Indian Institute of Technology, Bombay, in Mumbai, India. He has 15 years of industrial experience in engineering consulting, customer support and technical sales in the area of finite element analysis, base design and validation. As a CAE professional, he has worked on various projects in automotive, aerospace, oil and gas, energy, and heavy machinery industries in various domains such as durability, NVH, and crashworthiness. His expertise is in nonlinear FEA, composite and crashworthiness, optimization, lightweighting, and nonlinear multi scale material modeling. He also worked in Simulia da Sous Systems for five years as advanced application engineer supporting Abacus customers. With the intro out of the way, we will get started with a brief introduction to Vias. Raghavendra, would you like to take over? Yeah, hi, Beatrice. Thank you. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you. So thank you, everyone, for joining the webinar. And I know you are busy. And once again, thank you for taking time and uh, your interest uh, in the wireless corporation so let me begin with uh, this um, webinar real world is non-linear use abacus to simulate uh, reality um, in this presentation it will be about 50 uh, 15 minutes and at the end uh, we have the question answer session so this is the agenda of webinar uh, i will start with the introduction of our organization and then we'll move to the journey of uh, fine element analysis um, how fea was developed over the time and how uh, Abacus came into picture. And then we'll move to the linear analysis. Uh, what exactly is the linear analysis? How to do that one? What are the assumptions? What are the limitations that we'll discuss? And um, we'll move uh, to a more advanced analysis, which is a non-linear analysis. What exactly mean by non-linear analysis? What are the features? What are the properties of non-linear analysis? And we also see the challenges in uh, solving only analysis and then we'll move uh, on another topic uh, the sources of non-linearity we will talk about uh, what are the different uh, attributes that will make any problem non-linear and uh, we'll also see the different techniques i mean the how non-linear analysis are solved numerically in abacus and we'll see uh, some use cases of our customers how different people different companies are using abacus for knowledge analysis and how they're getting benefited and at the end we have the question answer so um the wise corporation uh, is an engineering uh, company with a rich experience across multiple industries namely energy and process life science industrial equipment transportation mobility and high-tech and aerospace and uh, it is a um, US-based company and present in uh, different locations like Chicago, Cincinnati, San Francisco, Detroit, and its headquarters in Houston. So you can see our office uh, in Houston here. And we are uh, proud of our team as uh, they're highly qualified and experienced. Mostly they are either PhD and the masters in different streams like solid mechanics, food mechanics, material and corrosion, numerical analysis, statistics, optimization, and the reliability. As a company, uh, we offer uh, many services like engineering consulting. We have the rich experience over the past many years where we are engaged with our customer and uh, helping them uh, for their complete product development cycle. We do also provide the training there's uh, mainly the engineering training wherein uh, we help them to uh, develop the methodology of final element analysis and product development cycle. And apart from this, we have um, PLM implementation and, op and automations. 
And uh, we also do provide software sales services. Actually, we are a platinum partner of Dassault System and we are a value added reseller for all their product, um, all their products like the Simulia, um, Abacus, Eyesight, Efficive, Tosca, Katia, Dalmia, 3D Experience. In fact, all the product um, uh, Dassault System have in their portfolio. We also provide the virtual design experience through collaboration and the data analytics. We provide automation and customization that many times help our customer to reduce their um, runtime and reduce their product development time drastically. And we do have some more advanced uh, services um, like 3D printing and additive manufacturing that we also provide. Uh, over the years of uh, our experience, we have many customers that we have been serving. We are, hel we are helping them uh, for fine element analysis, for com uh, compressible fluid dynamics, for data analytics. So these are uh, some of the partial list uh, of our customer. And we are proud to uh, ha have worked and supported them in their uh, engineering uh, uh, consulting, like the Cell, Delphi, Ex uh, ExxonMobil, Technip, uh, Genesis, applied material, uh, some customer for data analytics like you know, Persistent, Samsung, Gap, NASA, Halliburton. So these are some of the, our prestigious uh, customer that we have worked with. And in terms of the software um, sales, we have uh, many customers. These are some partial lists that we have. And we do a uh, lot of trainings and uh, we are really proud of having the good um, esteemed customer like the Boeing and Slumberger, Microsoft, Fillerberg, and Hutchinson, Cell. So we do, we are involved in um, basic, uh, starting to the basic to advanced level and uh, level training. Over the year of experience, I mean, um, WAS Corporation started uh, as a consulting company at the beginning, and over many years of experience uh, across the multiple industry that we have, we have built up the very good capability at uh, our organization. So it can start, I mean, it starts from uh, concept design uh, to um, component level design and validation using finite element analysis, fraction and failure, fraction and failure mechanics, optimization, reliability, and uh, structural analysis and the vibration analysis. And even we have more advanced analysis like electromagnetic analysis um, connected to uh, electrical vehicle. And uh, we do also provide uh, services on uh, multi-physics simulations like you know, fluid dynamics, structural, structural thermal, thermal fluid uh, simulation. We, we have capability for our uh, fatigue analysis, SN base, EN base, and we can include much more detailed um, attributes in the analysis. Um, we can also help you in uh, composite modeling analysis, simulation automation, and one of our um, expertise is the fitness for the services, and we have very strong capability and expertise in this area. Um, as uh, um, WAS Corporation is uh, also a platinum partner for DESO system, we provide a software sale for CAD, CAM, and CA tools. And um, we, are, we are not just a uh, software seller, but we, we are actually committed to our every client success through the technical excellence and innovation. We normally have the periodic um, meeting with them to basically understand how they are in terms of if there is a gap. So we provide the training, we provide the technical support, and we make sure that uh, we are partnering with them in their success. We have uh, domain knowledge in um, rich domain knowledge in final element analysis, uh, compressible fluid dynamics, and have expertise in um, multiple industry. And that's what actually uh, we uh, take the leverage to help our customer. And in fact, uh, we can review your existing simulation workflow for CAD, CAM, and CA and uh, we can provide you the feedback if uh, it requires any enhancement for uh, the speed and the usability in the current uh, workflow. Uh, we do have lots of training, as I mentioned, and um, it's like customized training, the standard training, introductory and advanced training, 
uh, in-house on-site and online training related to do um, FEA, the CFD, and um, uh, fitness for services. And we do also have um, more advanced services that uh, we can provide you like uh, Abacus uh, user subroutine, writing uh, user element, and um, Python scripting and doing automation for pre and post processing that can save a lot of time for our customer. Uh, we have some concept of um, open house days and training. So what exactly we do is um, the first Friday of every month, uh, we have these event wherein anybody can come up with their um, problem and discuss at our place. And that's free of, uh, free of charges. Wherein the idea is basically to help industry and, and tell us what to be done and how to be done. So this is the one thing we do actually regularly at our place in the Houston office. And uh, as for this training concern, we have very good expertise all in. Now we have um, DESO certified trainers. We provide the intro, advanced and customized training, corporate trainings, individual training, and as to, to the students and the public as well. In fact, some of the instructor at our organization are involved in university teaching, and some of them are in a part of the panel for some standards in the code as well. So it's a good platform for learning final limit analysis, CFD, and electromagnetic analysis. Uh, why Abacus? We, we feel that we are one of the best in the class in terms of uh, engineering services, CAD, CAM, and CA, specifically CA and a CFD, as um, we have the cross industry expertise. Our uh, team is highly qualified and experienced in different domains, automotive, aerospace, oil and gas, and different uh, domain. And they're highly skilled. I mean, most of them are either PhD and the masters and having around 10 to 15 years of experience. And, um, and we are in fact authorized uh, education partner for the SO system. So it's a one stop shop for your know, software, hardware, consulting, implementation. And we are present globally. I mean, very recently we have expanded our operation um, uh, out of uh, US. So we are a global company now. So now I'll move to uh, our technical topic. Uh, the real world is nonlinear. Use Abacus to simulate reality. I will begin with uh, this particular slide, which talks about the journey of final dimension analysis. It was uh, in um, early 1940s when um, the concept of finite element analysis was actually worked on. So there were some researchers who were working in their college and they formulated some numerical code for a very small problem like the beam. And they wanted to know what is the deflection, what is the stress on a small beam. That's where the foundation of finite element analysis started. And as time progresses, and there was a further development in finite element analysis in 1950, they developed a 2D analysis. Still, it was very primitive in terms of uh, usage to the industry because hardly you can model any bigger system. Whatever you had to model, it was just a beam or the plate. And um, over the time in 1960s, um, so more, I mean, it, it developed more and more, and it was the first time that the uh, final element was coined by Clo. We called it find element because uh, in a find element analysis, the geometry is actually divided into a small pieces called the element. That's how the term came up as a finite element analysis. Still in 1960s was kind of primitive. I mean, it was not so useful to the industry. It was used um, at, a, at a research level at a very uh, limited application. But as we progress in 1970s, um, so developed a 3D element. And that's where, I mean, the application of the finite element analysis grew. And this was a time wherein the more advanced analysis, like um, nonlinear finite element analysis, was developed. And this was a time where in Abacus was founded by three scientists, HKS, in 1978. And as time progressed, uh, there was more and more development in terms of the capability and um, like in 1980s, so they had more advanced capability like nonlinear dynamic analysis. 
So before 1980s, we could do you know part level analysis, some assembly level analysis, some system level analysis, but full system analysis like full crash crash analysis was I mean feasible only after 1980s. As to the development is going on, I mean in terms of um, a more advanced material properties, uh, element formulation to increase the applications, to increase the accuracy as time is going on. At this point of time, I think most of you are either working with finite element analysis or you're aware about what finite element is. So let us revisit what exactly finite element analysis is. So the main objective of finite element analysis is num to numerically simulate the response of a system or a structure to a given set of loads and boundary condition for the purpose of designing. So at the beginning, why it was used to basically get the you know, response of certain system. In design phases, it reduces the product development cycle because you can see the response of system virtually. You don't need to really build the prototype and you don't need to spend a lot of money in a physical prototype and you basically save time and the money by simulating it virtually. At the end, it basically helps in overall product development and improves the qualities. And another purpose of the final element analysis is the existing, to assess the existing structure. Uh, what I mean by this is um, there are system and after usage of those system, you need to basically see whether you can discontinue or you can still use it. For example, on the right hand side, you see this uh, nuclear containment after usage of certain year. I mean, you can basically see whether it can be decommissioned or still you can use it. So you can do a final element analysis and you can see what is the remaining strength. You basically predict what is the life remaining and based on that, you can continue using it or you can decommission based on the result. The another may, a major purpose for final element analysis is to establish the cause of the failure in the structure. Meaning um, in most of industry, uh, there are full failure. And to troubleshoot that problem, you can use final element analysis very effectively, wherein you can see much more detail what is happening to the system is more inside the component and each and every point you can see what are stresses, what is strain, what is a different parameter, what is the temperature in that way you can use in this particular perspective. The one of the most important thing I like uh, about final element analysis is you can get insight of physics of problem which may not be possible in a physical test. For example, I mean, you, you have some physical prototype and that you're going to test in your laboratory, do you have the I mean, physical limitation in terms of uh, putting the strain gauges? You cannot put in you know, hundreds and thousands of strain gauges, but that's possible in FEA because each and every node, hundreds and thousands of points, you can check what is a deformation, what is a stress, what is a strain, what is a temperature. And, and in fact, you can get those things which is really not possible in the physical test. You can repeat it, you can, a rerun it, you can replay it, and you can see as many times as you want in a different angle, different perspective. So that's the biggest advantage, I think, with the fine element analysis we have. So um, the purpose of simulation is not just to apply load and see what is the deformation, what is the stress or strain, but simulation need to be realistic. What do you mean by realistic is your simulation should basically capture the real physics. It should capture the real physics and it should be exactly in the same way your physical world is behaving. So on the right hand side, you see the crash analysis of car and the behavior is exactly same as you can see uh, the actual car getting crashed. On the left hand side, there's uh, the physical test wherein the a vehicle is being tested and you can see the simulation is exactly um, simulating the behavior of the real world. So um, with the simulation, you can actually um, see what is going to happen in reality before you actually build a prototype or before you bring your product into the market. 
To begin uh, looking into more details of the non-linear analysis, let's begin with the linear analysis. As the development of FEA started from 1D element to 2D elements and the 3D element from the linear analysis to the non-linear analysis, so let's try to understand what exactly linear analysis is. So this is one of the easiest and the basic analysis that you can do in finite element analysis. So what is a linear FE analysis? Linear meaning the response of system is linear. So here, if you see, this is the, your load and this is your deformation. And if load deformation curve is straight line, so we call the linear analysis because the response is linear. Here, the, your deflection or any response is linear with reference to the load that you are applying. So here, you will have the unique solution always. When you're doing the linear analysis, you have the unique solution. So just think about certain load here. You draw the vertical line, you will have one intersection point. So you will have one unique deflection or deformation value here. So every load will give you the unique solution. And there are certain characteristics of the linear analysis. One is the scaling, meaning if you apply 100 Newton load and you get a 10, 10 mm deflection, now, if you increase the load two times, as a 200 Newton, then you will get 20 mm. So this is scaling applies to linear analysis. Similarly, the superimposition also work. If force F is giving U and F2 is giving V, so F plus F2 will give U plus V. So this is a superimposition that is also applied to the linear analysis. So is one of the simplest analysis that you can think about. Uh, here you have the simple cantilever beam that you can see. One end is fixed, other you have applied the forces and you know the analytical expression uh, for the deflection at the free end here is a PL cube 3EI. So now here you can, you can basically understand that the relationship between the deflection and the force is linear in the nature. So this will produce something like this, wherein it is a straight line. So it's called the linear analysis. Uh, most of you have, have gone through the strength of material, wherein we had a similar kind of analytical expression. And before the advent of final element analysis, so it was the only analytical solution that were being used for designing any component systems and subsystems. But these, um, these analytical solution have certain assumption, like your material is isotropic, it is elastic material, you have a very small deformation, cross-section remains constant, there's no change in boundary condition. So there are huge list of assumption when we are dealing with analytical solution. And these solutions and analytical solution are valid only and only if all the assumption remains valid. So this is a um, typical equation of uh, linear analysis. This is the force matrix, this is stiffness matrix, this is a displacement matrix. So F is equal to Kx. K is a constant. So here you can see the slope of this particular response curve is constant. So this is a linear analysis. But uh, Linear analysis being a simplest in the nature, there are certain limitations. So what is going to happen if you have the non-linear behavior, something in this line, line that you see, the dust line, and if you approximate this non-linear analysis with the linear, what is going to happen is you are going to get a difference in the result. There would be certain inaccuracy in building it. So what's going to happen, the judgment or the performance will be wrong. And it may also lead you to the over design. So over designing is not really um, advisable at this point of time because we don't want our system to be over designed because it, it will not be economical. So having known what is a linear analysis, let's look into the nonlinear. The nonlinear FE analysis is the analysis wherein the system performance is nonlinear, something like this that you see. The behavior of any system is non-linear. Here there's a deflection and the load and the relationship doesn't remain linear, it's going into non-linear. So what is happening here, the stiffness is not constant. It's basically changing over the time 
from one time to one place to another place. It keeps changing. So in reality, if you see all the problems are nonlinear in nature, you can ask a question you know, whether which kind of problem um, is a linear or nonlinear, but in reality, almost all problems are nonlinear is another thing that we approximate some of the analysis as a linear within the certain operating condition. But whenever we approx approximate as a linear, we need to make sure that all the assumptions are actually met. So for here you can see the drop test of the mobile and there's a stand deployment. So these are the highly nonlinear problem. Whenever you have a nonlinear problem, so you have F is not equal to K constant X. So here the stiffness is not constant, it's changing from one deformation state to another deformation state. So um, the nonlinear analysis is computationally difficult and time consuming because the fact that we need to compute the stiffness matrix as, we, as the structure keep deforming. And it's possible that your solution or your analysis may diverge and your analysis will terminate in between because it's not finding the solution. And many times it's also very difficult to troubleshoot why it has aborted and you need the right engineering judgment uh, to model your fine element analysis for nonlinear analysis. So here you can see certain analysis like frontal crash, the crushing of the box, the crimping. So these all problems are nonlinear. Here your response curve will not be the straight line. It is non-linear in the nature. So let's look in the challenges in solving non-linear analysis. Uh, you might have heard many times, I mean, if you've done any non-linear analysis, then you might have experience that solving non-linear analysis is challenging, you know, because there are certain characteristics of non-linear analysis, like non-uniqueness. The solution is not unique. There's not a one solution. Okay, it's non-existence, non-scaling. We cannot apply the scaling. We cannot have superimposition. And in fact, your solution is history dependent. To explain you, let's look at this particular uh, image. So the blue line is actually the response curve of any system. Now um, uh, imagine that you want to apply certain load and you are interested to know what is the deflection of that particular system. So here is a P is a load level you're applied. Now you don't have any intersection between this blue and the red line. What does it mean is there is no solution for that particular problem. Now let's take another scenario wherein you have the curve something like this and you have the load level P something like this. And what is happening that you get, you get one solution point here, which is a unique solution. You got a one solution. Now what happens if you have a different scenario of nonlinear responses, the blue color, and you apply the force P. So what is happening, this point is also a solution for load P. This point is also a solution for load P and this is also P. And this is a characteristics of the nonlinear analysis. So what is happening is you may have no solution for nonlinear finite element analysis. You may have one solution for that particular load, you may have multiple solution for that particular load, or you may not have any solution for nonlinear analysis. And this is why many times the user are confused and it's very troublesome to get finite element, nonlinear finite element analysis. So does it mean that we should stop uh, doing nonlinear analysis? No, because this is the demand of the time. This is the technology which can actually help us simulate our problem more realistically. Without nonlinear problem, we cannot actually go much closer to the more accurate analysis. The need is that we need to understand the nonlinear analysis in much more detail in a precise manner so that we can model our analysis so that it is, uh, it is I mean, appropriate for the loading conditions and the boundary condition that you may have. So now the point is why certain problem becomes nonlinear. I mean, if it's linear, we have seen is very simple 
and you just need to compute the stiffness matrix once and you will get sure shot you will get the some solution but what are the things which makes nonlinear so there are three different sources or th three different reasons why any problem may become nonlinear. One is the material, other is the geometry, and third is the boundary. So let's look one by one. So material, so material nonlinearity implies a nonlinear relationship between stress and strain. So that this is a typical stress strain curve of any metal. So you can see there's a non the relationship of stress and strain is nonlinear. So when we have this kind of phenomena, your problem is nonlinear. So one is a metal plasticity, others nonlinear elasticity like rubber. Rubber has a highly nonlinear elasticity. Even the damage and the failure, which is shown here, after the damage starts, you know, it fails gradually. So this material curve is nonlinear. So all these phenomena related to the material behavior will make problem nonlinear. So another category is the geometry. So structural stiffness changes as it deforms because of the large deflection, deformation, large rotation, buckling, preloading. These are the certain things that will make problem geometrically nonlinear. Let's try to understand with a simple problem, the same cantilever problem. Here we apply the force P. And as you can see, there's an analytical solution deflection is directly proportional to the p so you can you can just conclude that this particular problem is linear provided all the assumption that we have seen like materials elastic deformation is small cross section remains unchanged etc etc less all those assumptions are still valid even then your problem may become nonlinear because of the geometry if your deformation is high Let's take here. When deformation is high, so what is going to happen, this particular load P, you can decompose into uh, the vertical force and the horizontal force. So now you have the two component. As the structure is deforming, and the PV, which is a normal to this particular length, is changing in magnitude and direction. And that's what will make this relationship nonlinear. So whenever you have all these attributes in your problem, you will have geometrically nonlinear behavior. So this is an example. I mean, this is a rubber dome. I mean, this under your keyboard, when you hit it, it could basically goes this kind of deformation and hits the floor and activate the switches. This is a, some kind of collapse. So these are geometrically nonlinear there's high deformation, large rotation, the buckling. So this all makes geometrically nonlinear. And let's come to the third category of nonlinearity, and that is a boundary of contact. So this is related to boundary. So the boundary nonlinearity occurs when a load or restraint changes in response to the structural deformation. What does it mean? As structure is deforming, the load is changing or the constraints or restraints are changing. So it's also called as a contact nonlinearity. So whenever you have contact in your problem, something like this, there's a differential carrier, there are different gears, and it is coming into contact with each other. In this scenario, your boundary condition changes, and that makes your problem. We'll see in more detail in the coming slides how exactly numerically this will make your problem nonlinear. Even the follower load, follower load is nothing but the load which will change uh, direction with deformation. So like pressure, for example, pressure will change the direction because it will always act normal to the surfaces. So here, if you see this example, this is a seat anchorage test. There are many, many different components. As this structure will deform, one component will come into contact with another one. So that will make your problem more complicated. It will make your problem non-linear. So deformation would not remain the linear in terms of the forces. So the contact makes your problem non-linear. Whenever you have the contact, your problem will become non-linear. So what happens is it changes your constraint abruptly and problem does not remain linear. 
let's take a look at this very simple problem of the cantilever beam. The same one problem is simple, but it's very easy to understand how this contact will make your problem nonlinear. So assume that you have the load P that you applied. And if you apply, let's say 10 Newton load and assume that you get a deflection, 10 mm, something like this. Now, if the problem is a linear, assuming that all the assumption for the linear analysis are met, so by applying 200 Newton, it will deform by 20 mm because it's a linear, your deformation will have the linear relationship with the load. So there's a linear relationship. You apply 100 Newton, you got 10. You apply 200 Newton, you got 20. But what happens within these particular assumption if you have a contact? If I put a block, fixed block here, and try to apply 100 Newton load, I will still get 10 mm. But what will happen if I apply 200 Newton load? Will it deform in this way? No, it will not. So it will deform the moment it touches the block and it stop deforming further. So what does it mean? You may get your uh, deformation 15 mm for 200 meter, 200 Newton. So this now your problem doesn't remain linear. Why? Because there is a contact. So here is very easy to understand that your tip will come into contact and it will still not go further down. But in a real analysis, wherein you have uh, hundreds and thousands of nodes and you really don't know which node will come into contact beforehand, that makes your problem more computationally intensive. And for the any final element solver to know certain node is in contact or not, it need to compute and it need to search for each and every node all the time. So there's a typical example and is actually multi physics problem, but it has a contact. See so the tire running on the road and you see the different portion of the tire is coming into contact with the road. So the portion that is in the contact with the road, it cannot basically penetrate the road. So the restraint need to be applied numerically. And these nodes are changing with reference to the time. So these uh, contact, whenever you have a contact, uh, your problem will become nonlinear and it needs certain consideration when you do analysis. So now look at the technique, um, how this nonlinear analysis are solved. And it's, it's for sure that whenever you have the nonlinearities of any kind, uh, whether it's a material, whether it's a, a geometry, whether it's a boundary nonlinearity, which may you know, occur in a in a combination, your problem may have all three different kinds of nonlinearity, or you may have only one. It depends on your problem. But there's one thing sure that computationally, your solver need to work harder and harder to get the real solution. And there are many techniques, you know, for, uh, to solve this particular you know, nonlinear analysis. And increment uh, incrementation iterative techniques are one of the most popular one. So what happens in incremental iterative technique is you have applied some total load, for example, P, let's say 100 Newton load. So it's not going to solve for 100 Newton load straight away because it is a nonlinear. Your stiffness would be changing from time to time. So what it will do, it will divide into a small fraction of the load. Let's say it will apply 10 Newton, try to find out the solution, and then it will apply another 10 Newton load, so total would be 20, and we try to find the solution, then keep incrementing then for 30 Newton, for 40 Newton, till it reaches to the 100% load that you have. So this is called the incremental iterative technique. And the Newton reaction uh, method is one of the most popular um, incremental iterative technique that most of the finite element analysis software uses just to demonstrate what exactly happens in the fine element code for Nolly analysis. So let's assume this um, the black color line is a response of any structure. Remember, this is the response curve that you may not be knowing beforehand, but just for the simplicity of understanding how this computation happens in fine element analysis, 
we, we assume that you know this particular response here. So uh, here, my objective is to basically gather what is a total, uh, what is a, this is my total load that I've applied, and I want to know what is a total deflection here. As it is incremental, I will apply small load fraction, let's say P1, so you know the horizontal line. Now, come, come back here at the beginning of your analysis at undeformed structure, you can compute the stiffness matrix based on the undeformed structure. So this is the blue line, which is a tangent stiffness. So the interaction point is the first iteration. In a first increment, it has basically applied a small fraction of load and it has done a one iteration. So it got the solution for this particular iteration. Now you can see that this particular solution point is far away from the actual value. So it will compute the error in terms of the residual to so this particular value. And what it will do that it will once again compute the new stiffness matrix, matrix here and it will find the new solution here. And still, if error is more than acceptable limit, once again, it will iterate till the point it reaches very close to the actual solution, wherein the residuals are very, very small. So here, at a third iteration, it has found the solution for load level P1. And after that, it will basically increase the load level. It will go to another increment, increment of two, and will keep iterating till it reaches the point U2. And it will keep incrementing till all the 100% loads are applied. And finally, you get the final deformation. And once you get a deformation, it could compute the stra uh, strain and the stresses and all other variable that you would like to know. So this is how the neural adaption method works here. And um, Abacus, I mean, uh, over, um, over more than 41 years of the development, uh, Abacus has become much more robust in terms of the capability, in terms of the application, in terms of the usability. And so at this point of time, it is a um, de facto standard for any knowledge analysis. And it is a um, general purpose tool and it can be used in many different industries like consumer packaged goods, life science, aerospace defense, automotive and transportation, high tech, architecture, construction, industrial equipment, energy. In fact, it is so versatile. I mean, it can be used in any industry that you can think of. So in terms of the general capability of Abacus, I mean, any, I mean, the engineer from the designer level to the expert can use for a simple uh, component level analysis to complete the system level analysis like full car crash analysis, wherein you have hundreds and thousands of different components going to huge deformation. So Abacus has, uh, I mean, uh, you can use Abacus for, I mean, not only the one type of analysis, but it can be used for different variety of analysis like static analysis, the dynamic analysis, linear analysis, nonlinear, structural, non-structural, multi-physics. So that basically makes it a complete uh, tool for um, your virtual validation. And it will enable you to stop making any assumption to perform more realistic simulation. And you simulate your product, nature and life more closely and more realistically, something like this. So long ago, I mean, this kind of analysis was not possible because the advancement, advancement of the simulation, the material models, the element formulation now, these kind of more sophisticated nonlinear analysis is possible. So you have different applications, different capabilities for the different industries. As we have also seen that the contact is one of the major um, cause of making your problem highly nonlinear because it is not continuous, it is highly discontinuous in nature. So Abacus has extremely robust uh, contact capability, is highly accurate and realistic, and it has general contact capability, is very easy to set up contact as well. And coming to the material model, um, Abacus has uh, huge uh, material models, um, and almost any material, engineering material, can be modeled with uh, 
with abacus, whether it's a metal, whether it's rubber, whether it's composite, whether it's a polymer, whether it's paste, concrete, ceramic. So name any injuring material, most of them um, abacus should be able to model in your analysis. So the, when you talk about the realistic simulation, our, we are talking about the accuracy more closer to the reality, but that's the only, uh, that's the only one thing, but the today's demand is beyond the realistic simulation. So not only we want the right result, but we also need to know what is the life of the component. We also want to optimize. So the Simulia portfolio uh, provides you this complete suit of the product like Abacus for the structural analysis, FEC for durability analysis, iSight for automation, Tosca for optimization. So this complete suit is, um, will provide you much more strength and the capability for doing the real engineering work. So here are some of the use cases of Abacus in different industries like automotive. Um, Abacus is a general purpose tool, it's a unified FEA, meaning it can be used in a different domains like crash analysis, NVH, write-in handling, different um, different system subsystem you can use like body power tank chassis is, is a completely unified in a sense it could be used in um, any engineering work so these are some of the customer cases wherein abacus is being used for noli analysis like ice engine the seating analysis the frontal crash the differential carrier and this is a ceiling analysis here you can see a very good correlation between the physical test here and uh, find element analysis using Abacus. Some of the aerospace uh, mm, use cases, here is the bird strike analysis, is a high deformation analysis, you can see is the non-linear analysis. And Abacus provides you the complete library of uh, the connector wherein you can uh, model mul um, multi-body dynamics with a linear and a non-linear connection with failure without failure. As I mean, I mean as a WASC Corporation um, was started with as a consulting company, so we have very rich experience in terms of helping our customer. And um, oil and gas is one area of our expertise and that we can help you. And these are some of the, our projects that we have done and helped our customer, like the band stiffener assembly analysis, the limit load assembly analysis, buckling analysis of storage tank, elbow erosion, the burst load assessment of the dented pipe, and so on. So, I mean, the application doesn't stop here, but I mean, even the life sciences, which is very complicated to model this kind of, I mean, muscles and the tissues are really, really complicated in the nature. So here you can see is a cramped state of the stent, and this is how it goes into, in the human body and it deploys. So this completely means high deformation, material deformation, all kinds of nonlinearities are actually can be simulated um, in it. And with this one, I would like to you know, conclude my technical presentation. You can uh, visit our homepage and uh, you can subscribe our channel in the YouTube, uh, Twitter, Facebook and you can get the update about our uh, upcoming webinars, I mean seminars and the event. And if you have any, any requirement of um, any injuring services, any product uh, related requirement, please um, drop us a message. You can contact us. We would be more than happy to help you for this. Uh, thank you very much for your time. And thank you much for thank you very much for uh, your uh, interest in the Wise Corporation. Looking forward to hear you. Thank you.